Let's discuss replacing the fuel injectors on a Dodge Cummins 5.9 liter common rail engine. Now we've got our injector here, we've got our protective cover right now, and later on we'll get down to replacing the electrical connections on here. But when we remove the injector, we're going to have to also replace the crossover tube. Now the crossover tube goes through the cylinder head and supplies fuel to the side of the injector here. And now this is a scar type fit and it's going to be torqued in there properly. We'll go through that process later on. But we are going to be replacing the crossover tubes as well as the injector. So first things first, we're going to have to remove the valve cover here. We're going to get the dipstick tube out of the way and remove the air inlet here along with the intake heater to access some of the fittings here. So let's get started. Well, now that we've got the valve cover off, we've got the air inlet out of the way. Now we're going to take a 19 millimeter end wrench and loosen up the nut on the high, high pressure fuel connection line here. And we're also going to loosen it at the rail. Break it loose here and we'll, we're going to work this out and get this out of our way. Then we also are going to take our 8 millimeter socket with a quarter inch ratchet and gently back off the nuts that are attached to the electrical connectors on top of the fuel injector. Now the nuts are going to stay with the harness and so we'll simply lay those off to the side. One more thing we have to do in order to get the injector out is remove the exhaust rocker stud. So I'm going to take a 3 8 ratchet and a 10 millimeter socket and remove this exhaust rocker arm. Later on when we go back together we're going to have to readjust this valve lash before we're done. But for now we can get this out of the way. Helps us gain access to the injector itself and we'll be ready for removal once I get this fuel crossover tube out as well. Now that our fuel line is out of the way we're going to take a 24 millimeter socket and remove the hold down nut holding our crossover tube into place. Once this is out of, out of the way, we'll take a pliers and we'll work that back and forth and remove the crossover tube. Now there's specific tools to help remove these things, but these are technically a one-time use piece. So I'm not too worried about damaging any threads at this point because we're going to simply discard the crossover tube and use a brand new one. So I'm simply going to grab this with the pliers, wiggle a little bit, and it pulls right out. And you can see how that's seated inside the cylinder head. Once that's out, we can access our hold down bolts on the fuel injector itself and the injector will be ready for removal. Using an extension in an 8 millimeter socket with my 3 8 ratchet, I'm going to locate the two bolts holding down the injector collar and remove them one at a time. Once the hold down bolts are out of the way, we can gently work our injector back and forth and get it up out of the bore. After a little bit of working it back and forth, our injector is now ready for removal. Now it's important to note that the copper sealing washer came out with this injector. That's a good thing. We don't want to double stack it when we install our new injector. So we've ensured that the old O-ring came out as well as the copper sealing washer. Now we're going to clean out the hole here. We're going to take some shop air, clean any oil or debris that may have fallen in there, clean it out, and we're ready to install our new injector. Okay, we've got our new fuel injector ready to go in. Ensure that the copper washer is installed on the bottom. And now I'm going to take a little bit of motor oil and lubricate the O-ring here so we don't cut it when we install it. Now we'll take our our injector, we're going to seat it in the hole. We might have to give it a little bit of pressure and start the bolts in order to draw it down in and seat on this, this O-ring. It's also important to understand that we've got this hole here pointing towards the driver's side of the vehicle so that crossover tube 
can be installed later. So we'll seat this down in there, then we'll install the crossover tube next. Now that we've got the injector snugged into place, it's time to install our new crossover tube. Now you'll notice that there's two balls here which are going to be pointed up and that's going to be our alignment pins. So we're going to again take a little bit of engine oil here and lubricate this o-ring help with the installation. And so with keeping the balls up you'll be able to feel this as it wiggles into place and it clicks into place there. Now we'll take our hold down nut, place it over the crossover tube and we'll gently put that into place here now. Now that we've got our wires and electrical connections torqued down properly on top of the injector, we're going to go back and torque that crossover nut. And so I'm going to take my torque wrench here and I'm going to tighten this nut. And so we'll work in short strokes here and wait to get the signal from the torque wrench. It, again, it's very important that this be torqued properly. Under torquing is going to result in a high pressure leak between the crossover tube and the injector. Or if we over tighten it, it's going to damage the injector. Both are bad things. So we're going to tighten that to 37 foot pounds and then we're ready to install our high pressure line again. So now once we put our high pressure line, we're also going to torque this line down to 37 foot pounds as well. Now that we've got everything installed in place, I've gone ahead and bolted down our exhaust rocker. We've also ensured that the number one piston is at top dead center. And I did this by using a 15 millimeter socket and a ratchet down below on the crankshaft and rotating it until the timing mark lined up. And I ensured that both valves here on number one have a little bit of movement. Now the spec in these, the intake valve should be at 10 thousandths of an inch. We haven't touched that one, so I'm not too concerned about it. Might not be a bad idea to check since we're here, though. But the exhaust valve, which we've removed, the spec on that is 26 thousandths. So I've taken a 14 millimeter wrench, loosened up the jam nut, and now I'm going to use an Allen wrench inside the adjuster here. And so we'll work this back and forth until we get our proper play here on the valve. Once that's set, I'm going to hold it in place and tighten down the jam nut. Once that's done, I will double check our clearance here, ensure that it's still to spec, and we're all set. Now it's time to reinstall the valve cover, the air inlet, and wrap up any electrical connections we made and see if the truck starts. That would be a great thing. There. Now that we've completed the job, we've had the truck running, we want to double check and make sure that there's no external leaks here. It's always a good thing. Never ever while one of these common rails is running should you break a line loose. These things operate between 5,000 and 23,000 psi of fuel pressure, so be very careful not to disturb one of these lines. While the truck was running on all six cylinders, no external leaks, I think we've done our injector replacement job successfully. And now hopefully you also understand what's involved and can also replace your own fuel injector in a Dodge Cummins 24 valve common rail engine.